I took some time off from social media and I just came back and I'm frankly disgusted by everything that's been going on. I wanted to add a quick intro to this video just because I wanted to announce I will be donating the revenue from this video and the next one on my beauty channel to the Black Lives Matter Fund. I will link down below their page and uh, I will link other resources, other places you can make donations to. Um, for anyone that can't actually help financially or can't go to protest themselves, there are things you can do. Uh, there are videos that you can watch that have a bunch of ads in them. I've watched some of them. Uh, so the revenue will be donated to cause obviously and then there are some petitions you can sign uh, I will do more research tonight to add more stuff But if there's anything else you think I should add to the list Please feel free to just add it in the comment section and I'll update the list the next couple videos are pre-filmed and it just Didn't feel right to upload them without addressing the situation whatsoever The whole thing though is just It's so enraging. I just don't even know what else to say Things just need to change. I'll see in the comment section. It's actually really cold today, but I refuse to turn on the heat because it is spring. Deal with it. If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be my May wrap up video. I'm gonna be talking about the books that I finished this month, slash also currently reading, because I wanted to talk about the three and a half <laughs> books that I'm currently reading. You'll see why. So let's start with the three <laughs> books that I completed in May. I have been saying very clearly for the whole year that I have been in a slump. However, three books, better than nothing, so let's do this. The first book I finished was The Whisper Man by Alex North. This is a mystery thriller, like a murder mystery, following a uh, investigation of a serial killer. Basically, a killer was uh, captured, he's in prison, but there's another murder, and people are wondering, you know, he's preying on the small town, and it's called The Whisper Man, and you're following uh, a dad moving in into a new house with his son. Things start becoming weird. He seems to be listening uh, to whispers through his window, and honestly, <laughs> why is everyone raving about this? Is like literally my reaction once I was done with it. it. I did go through it as an audiobook. I did go through it because it was part of my Goodreads reading challenge. It was one of the runner-ups, I believe, in the mystery thriller uh, section. I'm trying to read a bunch of the winners and runner-ups so I can do my own awards show at the end of the year like I did last year. And I gave it three stars because there's nothing wrong with it, but I just, okay, real talk for a second. I haven't loved a mystery thriller horror book in a really long time. I don't know if it is me or if it's just the books I've been picking up or the ones that people have been raving about that aren't that great, but please, please let me know in the comment section something I can read because I look back on my four years on booktube and I think there's only like a handful, like probably less than five that I really, really enjoyed and most of them actually now I'm <laughs> thinking about it. How did sci-fi twist to them? Are we on to something? Probably. There were some interesting twists, but I just, like I got to the end, I was like, oh, okay, that, that's what happens. You know, like no real reaction. And I'm reading reviews and people seem to love it. So I'm assuming this might be a me thing or maybe a slump thing. Who knows? Basically, I have no strong opinion. <laughs> it's just, okay, I read it. Next book I finished, I'm realizing, was also part of my Goodreads reading challenge. This one was the winner in the autobiography, I think, section. It is Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness, who is part of A Queer Eye, the show, which Every time I mention this, I need to like, finish it. Uh, it's a really wholesome show. I feel like everyone knows about it. Uh, I love it. I didn't know much more about him than, you know, he seemed like a really intense, but, you know, positive person. And I learned a lot more about him through the book, but I also realized that these books are just not for me. It's just not my jam. There's nothing wrong with it. If you are going to go through this book, I highly recommend the uh, audiobook, which I went through because he's the one narrating it. So I feel like he just, you know, it brings more you just get more out of the book. Uh, but yes, unfortunately for me, it's it's just not my thing. I think next year, if I do again the challenge, which I don't know, because so far I feel like I've been meh about most of the books that I've read for these challenges. Um, I don't think I will be reading anything in that category unless it's about something I really, really care about. Like I know, I think last year was uh, Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, which I did overall uh, enjoy. So I think maybe something like that I would read, something like this. Not so much, uh, but again, the reviews are really positive generally. So I think that once again, it is a me thing. Uh, but yes, it was still interesting to learn that obviously it becomes a real person when you're going through the book and you're hearing more about his life story. Uh, especially, I didn't know that he was dealing with HIV and addiction. And yeah, it just made him like more human basically. So if that's your thing, I would highly recommend the book. Otherwise, oh, I'm not giving a rating. I don't tend to give these books ratings because how do you judge someone's life? But I usually base my ratings on my enjoyment, which would probably not be very high. Now a book I finally enjoyed. 
The Royal Assassin, no, just Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb, which is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. Um, I had been like kind of so-so about the first book because it is a very well-known fantasy story. It's very character driven, which I wasn't expecting. Uh, so my rating, I think I had given it three, 3.5 stars for the first book. This I enjoyed more. However, the first like half to like three quarters, it felt very slow because it was focusing on a romance between the main character and you know his love interest, which I don't care about whatsoever. Uh, but the last bit, like the last like, quarter, was really, really interesting. I do really like some of the characters. The magic system is really interesting. Uh, there are like two different magic powers, I guess. There's the wit and the skill. The second one being like acceptable. Uh, it's mostly some type of like connection between some people. It's not very common and even less common is the wit. I'm hoping I'm not mixing them, probably am. Uh, <laughs> but that one is like really front upon. Uh, you basically have some type of connection with animals and the main character has both of them. And that part was really, really interesting. And there's a ton of political intrigue, especially again in the last part, things got really, really good to the point that I'm excited to read the third book. I wasn't again feeling it that much for the first half, but it came back strongly. It did take me two months to go through it, which Possibly because of the slum, possibly because it's like 30 hours long as an audiobook, which... Uh, but yes, overall, I think I'm gonna give it four stars. But it's mostly because of this, you know, last bit, because again, so much better. So uh, if you're going through it and you're not really feeling it, I would definitely say push through. And hopefully, actually, if anyone has read the third book, is it the best one of the three? Hopefully it is, because I will be reading it. I do have the physical book on my shelf and I'm trying to, you know, go through more of my books, even though I tend to go through them as audiobooks, apparently. Uh, but yes, we did it. Finally, a book I enjoy. <laughs> now, let's talk about the books I am currently reading, because like I said, I'm going through three <laughs> and a half books. Let's go with the first one, which is the audiobook I'm currently going through. I am going to be honest, actually, let me mention what it is. Uh, Imaginary Friend by Stefan. Shposky. Um, this was also part of the Goodreads reading challenge in the mystery thriller section. Um, I wasn't really feeling it so far because you're following a bunch of kids and I'm realizing really not my jam. But at about like 20 something percent, I'm currently at 25, um, things really pick up, which finally, because I was starting to be like, oh, should I just DNF it because I'm not really into it. You follow a kid who is kind of a little strange, uh, but then he kind of has <laughs> An imaginary friend at one point and he becomes you know smart overnight after having difficulties like uh dys dyslexia and yeah there wasn't that much happening and it's also a very long audiobook actually let me double check how long it is because like how many audiobooks are so long it's a 25 hour audiobook i told myself i wasn't going to do that again to myself because i keep doing this this year and it's not helping my slump i feel like if they were shorter like 10 hours I would go through like three in the time that I'm going through one and maybe I would just feel more, you know, motivated to continue. Uh, but we're doing it. After that, I will be more careful, promise. Uh, but yes, uh, it's finally getting more interesting. Uh, kids are just building this free house in the forest. Uh, but for some reason, it's becoming better. So fingers crossed. Once again, I feel like the reviews are really divided. Some people really hated it. Some people really loved it. I am hoping I will at least be okay with it. That's the goal because... Damn it, again, please recommend me some good mystery trailers because I don't understand why I've been struggling so hard. And it's the time of the year too that I'm starting to pick them up. Like summer, fall is when I binge read a bunch of them. Last summer, I think in one month, I read like seven. So please help a girl out. Um, Look, that one, it wasn't in my summer TBR because I was hoping I was going to have time to read it. And obviously the slump is still going strong. Uh, I barely read anything since the last time at like 368. <laughs> um, yeah, I am enjoying it. It's just a total me problem, but uh, I'm feeling that this is about to be a thing. Me actually sitting down and reading, I'm starting to just calm down a little bit. Let's be real, things have been very overwhelming for everyone, so I'm not, you know, giving myself too much crap for it. Uh, but yes, my reading goal has been lowered to 50 and I'm like, eight books ahead or something so everything's gonna be okay but yes this needs to happen hopefully this month but that's the one i'm currently reading and i was saying how i am like two and a half books in the middle of two and a half books because long story short i was sent this arc but it was sent to my old address and i didn't hear about it until this weekend so i finally got my hands on it and i read 
basically the first page. So I'm counting it as a currently reading because it was in my TBR and I will be reading this as soon as I'm done with this one. So another reason to actually finish it. And uh, The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence, which is the first book in the the Ice series, which is part of the same universe as uh, the Ancestor trilogy. I've been reading about uh, Red Sister, which is the first book in that trilogy for a while. It's just so amazing. And I've been dying to get more from that world. And uh, my first impression is it looks too short for my taste. I want so much more from that world, uh, but it has 368 pages. So it's actually not that short, but uh, I adored that universe because the magic system is really interesting. There are like four different types. Uh, the main female characters are just very complex and interesting, a bunch of relationships between, between them. And um, it's kind of a apocalyptic world and I am dying for more. So here we are happening right now, for sure. Did I mention in my TBR, just in case, uh, the second audiobook that I'm listening to, but not really yet, but I wanted to mention that I will be reading it throughout my um, reading challenge I'm doing this month for Proud Month, Pride, Proud, <laughs> for Proud Month. <laughs> For Pride Month, uh, it's gonna be Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is the YA contemporary of last year. I feel like romance, whatever, people were all talking about it. A bunch of people have been telling me not to read it because I'm not gonna enjoy it, but it is part of my reading challenge for the Goodreads one, and uh, everyone has been talking about it. I just wanna know if I'm gonna like it or not. And if I don't, I will just forever give up on why romance probably <laughs> but just in case okay i'm including it in here just bear with me uh yeah so that's gonna be it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed just a quick reading currently reading and wrap up really please let me in the comment section if you're also feeling the slump or if you're one of those monsters that have been reading like 30 books a month i'm so jealous i just can't get myself to do it but again june summer when the sun finally comes out we shall be reading a lot more so thumbs up subscribe i will be putting more videos on the screen that i recommend you check out and please let me in the comment section if there are any special specific <laughs> special specific videos that you would like to see because i want to know what you are in the mood for do you want to see more reading vlogs do you want to see more like group favorites slash recommendations kind of video let me know and i try and i will try <laughs> to actually learn how to speak uh and yeah i <laughs> will see you in my next video <laughs> bye